So I'm sitting in the schoolyard of the local high school near where I live. It's called uh, Nora Real, or the North... Well, Real, really. Um, it's an abbreviation for another word in Swedish, so it doesn't translate very well. I slept for about six and a half, seven hours tonight, which is usually fine, but I woke up feeling unusually tired. So, for the first day in four or five days, I'm uh, back on modafinil. Now, modafinil, for those of you who haven't uh, heard, is a drug that I've been prescribed by my doctors for something called hypersomnia. And hypersomnia is... Um, well, imagine you're narcoleptic. Narcolepsia is when you just fall asleep without warning. You can fall asleep at any point during the day. Uh, hypersomnia is like that, but slightly different. You don't automatically fall asleep, but at any moment or any given moment in the day, you could fall asleep. It's um, basically excessive daytime drowsiness is the uh, common description of it. So you have this thing where um, if you're sitting still for long enough, whether that be in traffic or in a meeting or on public transport or something, watching a movie or watching TV, you basically fall asleep because you're just excessively drowsy. Most people have a, um, have a cycle where their you know, energy level starts off low in the morning, then they go up during the day, and then they go down during the night. So imagine that's like a continuum from zero to a hundred. Uh, people, you know, have this cycle. Um, people like me with hypersomnia, we just stay down in the, you know, uh, 20s to 30s constantly. It doesn't really matter how much we sleep. It doesn't really matter, you know, if we sleep for 4 hours or 12 hours. We're just equally tired during the day, constantly. Which is why in my early teens I started um, self-medicating with uh, caffeine. Uh, you know, drinking excessive amounts of Coca-Cola and uh, graduating to energy drinks. And uh, that's something that I've been doing ever since, you know, just to stay awake. Um, it's not really something that I noticed in my teens, but that just worked for me. Um, and something that I've been doing ever since. And uh, it, it started becoming a problem because caffeine... I'm guessing it's pretty windy right now. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, it, it started to become a problem because caffeine, as you know, you know, you, you get accustomed to it and you start needing more and more caffeine and caffeine also has other negative side effects like you get jittery, you get heart palpitations and um, um, it decreases your tolerance to stress and so on. Uh, a lot of people with uh, hypersomnia, you know, if it goes undiagnosed, these are the kind of people who fall into um, amphetamine use and such things because, you know, they, they just need something to stay awake and to get that added little boost. Uh, but I, uh, I discovered hypersomnia while researching my symptoms online and I went to the doctor and we did lots of tests and um, he uh, eventually uh, prescribed me uh, modafinil, which is, um, it's basically amphetamine without the side effects. And uh, you get this gentle energy bump, uh, it lasts for about six to 10 hours, a little bit depending on um, where you are, you know, in terms of sleep and food and so on. Uh, but it gives you this gradual energy bump and you, you kind of get this, uh, this curve now and uh, you get energy during the day that tapers off by night and lets you fall asleep. Uh, the dosage prescribed is 100 milligrams in the morning and then 100 milligrams at lunch. I've been experimenting a little with the dosage because I find that some days I need 200 in the morning and then 100 at lunch. Other days, 200 in the morning is fine. Other days, 100 in the morning, 100 in the afternoon is fine. It's, it's um, not always the most obvious thing. But yeah, so modafinil, that's something that I take. I'll be uh, visiting the doctor in about a week and a half for a follow-up meet regarding the uh, modafinil use because he only prescribed me uh, two and a half months worth of uh, medication. Uh, but so far it's worked really well, I mean, most days when I feel just dead and tired, uh, I take these and I become like a functioning normal human again. And it does seem to affect my uh, still undiagnosed ADHD. Um, my, uh, the therapist that I used to see said that I most probably have ADHD, so I went to a psychiatrist and they did their initial test and said, yeah, you probably have ADHD, and 
we're going to put you through the proper test so we can diagnose you and give you the medication. Uh, but I've been waiting for almost a year now for that to happen. And uh, basically they're just backlogged and um, they'll get to me as quickly as possible, which is probably going to be, you know, in a month or two, uh, hopefully. So, uh, but yeah, the, uh, the modafinil seems to have a positive effect on the ADHD symptoms as well. I, I think clearer and it's easier for me to, um, uh, to get lost in a single task rather than to be distracted off to the side all the time like, um, like I usually am. So that's nice. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see how if they do diagnose me with ADHD and give me the medication for it, how this will affect it. You know, whether they will compete with each other or whether I can just stick with the uh, ADHD medication, which also has positive benefits to the uh, hypersomnia. But we'll see. We'll see. Right now, I'm just going to keep walking my dogs. Uh, I need to buy a new um, harness for Locke because there's a crack in the plastic of the uh, thing on the one that he has today. And I really don't want the harness to break and him to just run off because that would be bad. I would get a call from the north of Sweden a day or two later saying they found the dog. Which, uh, yeah, is, is not optimal. In fact, it's what I would call suboptimal. I also want to play some more Pokemon, of course, because that's the kind of guy I am. And, um... currently level 20, and I'm gonna try to get up to 21 during the day. Shouldn't be impossible, we'll see. My partner had a 10km uh, egg as well that just hatched, and uh, she sent me this screenshot right here. And that is a Pokemon I don't have, and I'm kind of hoping... What are you doing, Bentham? Yeah, so about that ADHD getting distracted thing. Uh, but yeah, so I am uh, gonna walk, hatch my egg, and uh, I'll bring you along for the ride. See what happens, alright? Talk to you soon. So I picked up the new thing for, uh, for lock. Oh, come on, come on. So it's... I'm trying to just get rid of my headphones. So the name for this thing is the Halty. Sorry, oh, we're not entirely done yet. This is the Halty. It goes around his nose and ensures that he doesn't pull on the leash as much. Because, as well you know, this is a husky, a sled dog. And uh, what they do is they pull on leashes. It's kind of what they were built to do. And there we go. Come on, look. Let's show the camera. See that? He's now got this thing that when he pulls too much on the leash, it pulls his face downwards, and he doesn't like that very much. So we can actually remove the collar that I've had around his neck because you want to smell it. You want to smell the collar? Yeah, that's you. That's how you smell. Look, wait. And there we go. Now he's just got this halty thing. Now it comes with an extension, meaning that if you want, you can put the extension through and wrap it around itself. And you've got a longer lead to attach to, but I don't trust the construction on this. It's uh, a little bit too flimsy. So I'm gonna go without the extension. Somebody's sending me messages. I wonder who that is. I'll know in a bit. And there we go, there's the halty. Oh, and this one even has a thing. Look, let's move around so people see what's going on here. 
There we go. This one even has this thing where you can adjust the tightness, which is nice. Much, much better than the old one. Good boy, Locke. Yes, you are. Aren't you a good boy? He is such a beautiful dog. I just hope Bentham turn. Speaking of the devil, I just hope Bentham turns into a dog as beautiful as Locke is. I mean, I doubt it because he's a little shit, but you know, there is always hope. Now, despite Pokemon Go being the only game that I talk about, it's not the only game that I play. I have two other franchise games, as it were, that I really enjoy. One is the uh, Star Trek game, Star Trek Timelines, I think it's called. And the other is this. It's a Futurama game that is very similar to, I don't know, Candy Crush and the rest of them. Um, Futurama themed with various episodes where um, you got special powers based on whatever character your episode is about, so to speak. So I'm currently playing the Calculon episode. One of the things about this game is, you know, when you're done, you get zero, one, two, or three stars based on your progress in the game. And I am the worst kind of game player that I am a completionist. I will not move ahead to the next level until I've done three stars on the one preceding. And this level had been such an annoyance to me. I've been playing it for probably 10 to 12 days, and I keep getting one or two stars. I mean, even when I finish the level, I get one or two stars. Most of the time, I don't even finish the level. So I decided to sit down and record myself playing it, and what do you know? This time, I got three stars. Maybe I should just record my playing more often, because that will give me three stars. I don't know, I'm not superstitious, but, you know, it seemed to work this time. It absolutely seemed to work. As well, you'll see right now. Just wrapped up an episode of Moving On, the weekly movie podcast that I do with uh, three other people. And um, this week it was just Torag and me. We were talking about Gods and Monsters, the um, Ian McKellen, Brendan Fraser movie from 1997 or 8. Um, and afterwards, we, we uh, Torag and myself, we got into this interesting discussion where he asked me whether I feel extra proud of being Icelandic nowadays. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm from Iceland originally, I just live here in Sweden. And um, he asked me, you know, because of the recent successes we've had in sports and, um, you know, other things, we've got, you know, the mountain on Game of Thrones is Icelandic, and the recent um, CrossFit games, there were two Icelandic women in the top three, uh, you know, first and third place were Icelandic women. Um, and, and so on, you know, the recent uh, European Cup in football is uh, another great example, you know, where Iceland made it all the way to, uh, you know, being one of the eight best countries in Europe in, in football, or soccer, as Americans call it. Sorry. Um, and I thought about it, and, um, you know, yeah, I, I, I think I do. And um, I see myself as a European First and foremost, I, I don't feel a very strong kinship to Sweden, my adoptive country. Uh, I don't feel a strong kinship to Iceland, uh, my biological country, so to speak. Um, I, I feel at home in most of the European countries. I mean, I've been to um, many of them, and I, I feel equally at home in, you know, whether that be the United Kingdom or Italy or France or Germany or Greece or Romania, you know, I, I've been all over the place. and. I feel like a European, first and foremost. Um, but yeah, I told him that I do sense this um, maybe um, slightly uncomfortable nationalistic pride when uh, I see the success that Iceland has. And he said that, he, he's told me something that I didn't think about initially, and which makes a lot of sense now that he said it, that maybe it isn't nationalism per se, Maybe I'm just feeling the pride that the underdog succeeds. I mean, Iceland has a population of 330,000 people. That's tiny. That's really, really small. And 
for for Iceland to have the highest per capita success rate in Miss Universe, you know, we've had more Miss Universe per capita than any other country in the world. We've had more strongest men in the world than any other country in the world per capita again. Uh, we've done so well in the CrossFit Games. We've done so well in, um, uh, not in the Olympics, strangely, but, you know, there is that. Uh, you know, we, we were um, European champions in handball back in the days. We've uh, now done really well in football, or again, soccer. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's the underdog. You know, it's the, it's the small guy winning out over the big guy. It's, it's this thing where... Because, I mean, the, most of the entire football team in Iceland, that's not their day job. These guys go home from the uh, European Cup and go back to their day jobs, whether that be, you know, dentist or school teacher or bricklayer or, you know, whatever it is that they do as a day job. They're not highly paid football stars. They're not, you know, Ronaldo Messi who does football because that's his job. They're not Slatan Ibrahimovic who does football because that's his job. These are just normal sand of the earth kind of people. Is that a term? Sand of the earth? Earth of the something? Sand? What? I think that's a term. That's so weird. Huh. Anyway, they're just normal people. And uh, for them to get this far and to succeed this well from a country that's so small, yeah, of course I'm proud. Of course that fills me with some sort of, um, you know, pride. It, it, it does something to you. And it wasn't until he said it that I realized that, okay, this is not nationalism. This is... This is the underdog. This is David versus Goliath. And that makes a lot more sense to me now. Because I've never seen myself as a nationalist. Whether that be Iceland, Sweden, or hell, even Europe. I don't think Europe is a, you know, better continent than any other continent. I don't think white people are better than other people. I don't think men are better than women. I don't, you know, I don't believe in, you know, oh yeah, go whatever team it is I belong to. I don't think... Christians are better than Muslims. I don't believe, you know, Catholics are better than Protestants. You know, th there's none of that in me. So I've always been a little bit uncomfortable with this entire thing that, you know, yay Iceland! Iceland won something! Yay! Because it felt too close to nationalism, but it isn't. And I hadn't considered it until Torag just pointed it out to me in, in such a, just an offhand way that Maybe it's not nationalism. Maybe it's the underdog. And it is. Huh. Thank you, Torag.